Okay, in this video we're going to talk about some slightly different types of motion problems or distance problems. So you and a friend both traveling to, from the Seattle area. You start 38 miles east of Seattle. So what I wanted to do in this one is to show that we have a number of different tools we can use. We have the chart with the two rows, distance equals rate times time for columns that we've used. We also have the triangle D over RT that we can use to solve some distance problems. Another important strategy is to make a diagram. So we know that if this was Seattle and you start out 38 miles east of Seattle. So you're over here 38 miles east of Seattle and you're going to be traveling 62 miles per hour. Now you have a friend who's starting out 20 miles south of Seattle and they're going to be traveling south at 65 miles per hour. All right, so what we want to do then is to figure out um, who will be further away from Seattle in two hours and by how much. So we can say that remembering that distance equals rate times time, that so for this particular question we know that your distance is actually going to be we're talking about your distance from Seattle so the distance that you'll travel in two hours that's pretty straightforward that's 62 miles per hour which is your rate times the time which is two hours if you multiply that that'll give you 124 miles but you're not 124 miles from Seattle you're starting out 38 miles away already so you would have to add 38 plus 124 and that would give you 162 miles from from Seattle all right. Now, as far as your friend is concerned, we'll do his in green. Distance equals rate times time. So the distance that he will travel in two hours is 65 times 2, which is 130 miles. But your friend is starting 20 miles already away. So we're going to have to add that 20 to the 130 and now your friend will be 150 miles away from Seattle. All right. So, who's further away? You are further away by 162 minus 50 by 12 miles. All right? And again, you need to show the work that leads to that. Now, how many hours will it take for you and your friend to be the same distance from Seattle? Well, we don't know the time in this case. So the time that you're both going to travel, even though you're starting at different distances, you're both going to travel the same time. So your distance from Seattle Let's call that D sub Y for your distance. So your distance from Seattle is, again, 38 miles to start plus 62 times X or times T. Your friend's distance is starting 20 miles away and then 65 miles per hour. And what we want to do is find out when those two distances will be the same. So we simply set 60 38 plus 62x equal to 20 plus 65x. And easiest thing might be to subtract 62x from both sides to end up with 
38 is equal to 20 plus 3x. Subtract 20 on both sides, leaving 18 is equal to 3x. Divide by 3, and so x equals 3. What is that? It's 3 hours. And so we say that in 3 hours, you and your friend will be the same distance from Seattle. So we could have solved this problem using the chart. It would have been a little bit different. But I hope that you can see how sometimes we need to be flexible in the different approaches. And distance is really just rate times time. Right? Sometimes we'll know the distance and the time. We just plug them in and multiply. Sometimes we don't know the time, and we'll just multiply the rate times x. And that is equal to the distance. So in this case, we had to add a quantity for our uh, starting, uh, starting points. OK, so I'm going to do another example or two from our packet. Now, if we use the strategy that we just learned to come to take a look at the cheetah problem, which we've seen before, uh, it might help us to set up a problem help us to set up as an equation to find the solution. So number 33, a cheetah that is running 90 feet per second is 120 feet behind an antelope that is running 60 feet per second. So if I were to make a diagram and say this is the antelope and this is the cheetah, so the antelope, we know, is running at 90 feet per second. No, the cheetah is running. And the antelope is running at 60 feet per second. And we know that there is a distance in between the two of 120 feet. So from this, we can make an equation. We want to find out how long it's going to take the cheetah to catch up to the antelope. And from this, we can see that the distances, we don't know the time. So we're going to call that x. Well, the distance that the cheetah will run is The distance the cheetah runs is 90 feet per second times x seconds. The distance that the antelope runs is going to be 60 times the number of seconds that the antelope runs. Now, the problem here is that they're not both running the same distance. They are running the same time, but they're not running the same distance. And who's going to be running a further distance? Well, you can see from the diagram that in order for the distances to be equal to each other, the 90x that the cheetah runs has got to be equal to the 60x plus 120. So the antelope, the, sorry, yes, the antelope is actually going to be running a shorter distance than the cheetah runs. So we need to add 120 feet onto the antelope's distance. Then we'll know the distance that the cheetah runs. Now, you could also subtract 120 feet off of the uh, cheetah's distance. But when you see this, it turns out to be a fairly straightforward equation. We're going to subtract 60x from both sides. Oops. And we'll just be left with 120 on the right and 30x on the left, dividing by 30. And we get x is equal to 4. Well, what is 4? 4 is our time. And in our units of measure here, we should add. And that'll give us our time in seconds. So we want to come back here to say x is equal to 4 seconds. 
and that's how long it will take for the cheetah to catch the antelope. So we didn't use the chart in this case. We used a diagram and showed that the distance on the left, uh, 60x plus 120, will equal the distance traveled by the cheetah of 90x. Set the two equal to each other at that point, and then solve for the solve the equation for time. So to be good problem solvers, we really have to learn to be flexible, to use all of the tools. We can use a chart, we can use the, the DRT triangle, and we can use a diagram sometimes to help us. And different people might prefer different, one, different uh, methods to solve the same problem, and that's okay. So, second, a cheetah can run at top speed for only about 20 seconds. If the antelope is too far away for the cheetah to catch it in 20 seconds, the antelope is probably safe. Your friend claims the antelope in exercise 33 will not be safe if the cheetah starts running 650 behind it, feet behind it. Is your friend correct? And explain. Well, we might think about this in different ways. If the cheetah can only run top speed for 20 seconds, we can multiply 20 times 90, and we would get 180 feet. Sorry, 1,800 feet. 20 times 90 would be 1,800 feet. So the cheetah is only going to be able to run uh, f at top speed for about 1,800 feet. Now the antelope is going to run that same 20 seconds at 60 miles per hour, 60, sorry, feet per second, and so the antelope would run about 1,200 feet in the same time. And what that means is that if the antelope is within 600 feet of the cheetah when it starts, then the cheetah will be able to catch up to it. So your friend here is incorrect. And so the cheetah will only be able to catch the antelope if it's within 600 feet from it. But since the antelope is 650 feet away, the antelope should be safe. All right, so we'll, uh, this is another motion example. We'll see if we can fit another problem on here. So in this problem, we come back to something we did earlier in the uh, marking period. A boat leaves New Orleans, travels upstream for four hours. The return trip takes only 2.8 hours. So to save some time, I'm going to set up the chart all at one time. And the boat is traveling three miles per hour faster downstream than upstream. So we know that uh, going upstream, it took four hours. Coming back, it took 2.8 hours. Now we don't know the rate going upstream. So we're going to put x there. But we do know that it's 3 miles per hour faster coming back. So we're going to put x plus 3 there. So on our distance, we have 4x. And we have 2.8 times x plus 3 for the distance there. So we just need to set these two equal to each other. And we have 4x is equal to 2.8 times x plus 3. And multiplying that out, we get 4x is equal to 2.8x plus 2.8 times 3 equals 8.4. We're going to subtract 2.8 from both sides, 2.8x rather, from both sides. And that leaves us with 1.2x is equal to 8.4. Dividing by 1.2 on both sides, we get x is equal to 4 hours. Nope, x is 4 miles per hour. Then since the travel time was 4 hours, we multiply 4 by 4, we get 16 miles upstream. So that'll do it for this video and for these problems.